Hey everyone, this is Dr. Lowell Sala once again of NYC Emerging Healthcare Technology, your go-to place if you want to learn more about blockchain, machine learning, AI, data science, and web development in healthcare, and also if you want to learn more about digital health. So today, I am overly and extremely excited because if you've been listening to me for the past four months, then you probably realize that I've been talking about blockchain a lot and how blockchain can actually help in in you know facilitating better uh, healthcare systems so this is why so this is why what we're going to do is i'm going to show you actually one of the applications of blockchain so when people so so when people talk about blockchain what they're actually trying to say is that it is a, a very good application because it is a decentralized ledger so uh, there are a lot of applications when you talk about decentralized ledger first one is to use it for example in tracing drugs and another one is tracing it for example in medical supplies but the best application i think personally is using blockchain in your medical health records and in fact in some government estonia for example already has an estonia which makes use of, of blockchain in facilitating on making sure that the the medical records are safe and secure using uh, blockchain so uh, but again before i do that i would sincerely like to thank hassan and our groupmates because this project was actually or uh, submitted at the new york city hackfest and in that hackfest we actually won best in data and security and i'm extremely proud to have been part of the group and i'm extremely proud to, to have been part of that hackathon and also this application makes use of Blockstack. So I'm actually going to put a link on Blockstack and the documentation and how to, if, if you plan on making your own, was this application, how to use Blockstack for that matter. And also if you plan on making your website live, I'm also going to put uh, the link down below of uh, Bluehost, which is one of the best places to actually purchase your domain. So I think we are ready. So I'm actually going to put you now or bring your eyes now to the screen. If you look closely at the screen, you can see that this is a health data record with my name on it. And actually what, what's going on here is that I am the patient here. So what I would do as a patient, I will just click my name. And then after clicking my name, if I haven't registered to Blockstack, so I'm going to make use the Blockstack platform. And if I haven't registered, for example, it will just prompt me to register my name using my email. But since I already registered, I will just go and click my ID. And then after clicking my ID, it will prompt me to, to this uh, user interface with, for example, I can put an image of myself. I can upload an image of myself here. And also I will have three options. First one is view, wherein I can view my medical record. And the second one is allow. Now this is uh, quite tricky because once I click allow, what this does is it I, I will now have the option to allow my physician or my healthcare provider to view my medical record. So not all, so in that sense, you know, not all medical or healthcare professional will be able to view my medical record. Only the people that I will allow to view my medical record will be able to view my medical record. Now, if you've studied about medical ethics, you know how important patient confidentiality is, especially in the age of HIV, especially in the age of right now we have COVID-19. So this is why it's important to have patient autonomy and to emphasize how important it is to have medical to, to have a secure and and confidential uh, database especially for our medical records and then if for example i want to sign out i will just click the sign out button and i will again be prompted to the landing or to the login page now if you haven't subscribed please make sure to click that subscribe button and ring that notification bell so that you will be able to hear and see every time i upload new videos and new contents so i think we're ready so before i begin you know before we basically create that uh was this that application or that decentralized application i just want to bring you over to blockstock.org because it really is a, a good uh, was this discussion and you can read a lot about you know blockchain you can have at least and if you if you have no understanding for example of blockchain it will give you uh, nice references to read on blockchain and you know what what decentralization is really all about so just to have a brief description on how blockstock blockstock works 
this is uh, the page. So on this page, you'll find everything you need to understand about how Blackstock works. And you know, if you're new to decentralization and you have absolutely no idea about blockchain technology, these are some of the interesting resources that you know that you can actually get started. I remember I started reading this way, way, way back. I think it was two years ago. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, you can read about you know why decentralization matters and uh, why Bitcoin matters, for example, and uh, the next wave of computing. And I actually have a nice uh, yeah, it's it's this one. So it was during the era of the first, I mean, the internet when you know internet services were built on open protocols and and were controlled by the internet community. So with with a decentralized application, it really helps you know bringing power back to the people. So what is the vision of Blackstack? So it's an open source effort to design a network with the security of Bitcoin and the expressivity required for developing central decentralized application. And with this, you know, decentralized apps, mass data breaches, for example, loss of privacy, which you probably have heard already, and lack of data portability can be a thing of the past. So this is the, the dream of of what's this of Blackstack and or the, the the values and uh, you know the, the what they hope to accomplish the vision and and also uh bitcoin as as a backbone so blackstack builds on an extends the bitcoin blockchain you probably heard this name what's this <laughs> over and over again satoshi nakamoto whoever that person is or that group of people where they designed uh it's limited to scripting language and uh for single use tracking the ownership of Bitcoin, which is one of the things that keeps Bitcoin secure. But it also means you can't program Bitcoin with enough expressivity expressivity to build a decentralized applications. So Blackstar actually adds this expressivity to Bitcoin without using without spinning up the new proof of work chain. So instead, Blackstack reuses Bitcoin's uh, computing power and its blockchain for settlement and security. If you are a developer, for example, all the documentation all the documentation is here. So you just click this one. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, it's here. So uh, all the documentation you need to build your decentralized apps and your smart contracts. So if you want to build an app, it's all here. Introduction, for example, building a to-do app, creating a smart contract. And there are some like Hello World tutorial, counter tutorial, uh, testing contracts, signing transactions. And of course, there are introductions here, use cases, language design. And if you want to learn Clarity, which is another programming language. And I think one of the major questions that you would ask is, you know, where is the data stored? Especially when you talk of, or says when you talk of blockchain, especially when you talk of medical records, right? Where is the data stored? So, um, a decentralized storage so uh, blockstack makes use of a decentralized storage ar architecture and uh, the blockstack network stores the application data with a storage system known as gaia so transactional metadata is stored on the blockstack blockchain and user application data is stored in in gaia storage and then storing data of the blockchain ensures that the blockstack applications can provide users with high performance and high availability for data reads and writes without introducing central trust parties, which is one to want to avoid initially. So blockchains require consensus among large number of people so they can be slow. So additional blockchain is not designed to hold a lot of data. This means that, for example, blockchain is for every bit of data user might write and so expensive. So for example, imagine if your application we're storing is every tweet in the chain so that, that this is going to cost a lot, right? So the Gaia storage system consists of a hub service and a storage resource on a cloud software provider. And this storage provider can be commercial, such as your Azure, Digital Ocean, Amazon, EC2, and so forth. So typically, uh, the compute resource and storage source reside in the same cloud vendor, although this is not a requirement. And Gaia currently has a driver support for S3 and Azure Bob storage, but the driver model also allows other backend support as well. So this is, I mean, this is just you know like a basic or fundamental knowledge if you wanna this if you wanna uh, uh, facilitate or you wanna understand more about uh, Blockstack. So, so I think yeah. So what I'm going to do now, since uh, yeah, so since we are here already, so I'm just gonna uh, create the the what's this the application or the decentralized application. So again, if you're new to to web development that you've never actually coded before, and if you're using Microsoft, uh, what's this a Microsoft uh, what's this platform or Microsoft laptop, um, it's 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 relatively hard. So make sure to download your Git Bash. So right now, uh, if you can see, I'm I'm what's this? I'm using my Git Bash, and uh, what's this? 
I'm just gonna make it larger so that you can see okay and then I'm just going to mkdir and just I'm gonna write let's say medical records then I'm just gonna see the medical records so now I'm inside the directory right so no problem so the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm just gonna go to my github so Hassan actually uh, did uh, the physician part I did the, the how they call this I did the patient part for this one so Hassan was the one who made the, the physician side of the, the application so what I'm going to do since I have github I will just write git clone so you can use my you can visit my what's this my github profile like it if you like my my application and just I'm just gonna click enter so it's gonna clone now and then let's see if it works it's gonna wait for a few minutes but while we are uh, cloning I'm just gonna look uh, what's this go to our to my uh, github or uh, this repository so uh, if you're new to github you know uh, just register with github and then uh, if you what's this go follow me if you like my <laughs> my projects that i'm doing just go follow me and then uh, what's this and then yeah uh, like if you like what you see <laughs> if you like uh, what i'm uh, what i'm currently creating so we are still waiting so there are a lot of uh, what's this discussions if you want to read more about uh, block stock so they talk about here digital assets so the tax of blockchains actually enable anyone to create own and transfer digital assets which is secured by the bitcoin blockchain so common use cases are new types of business models governance which is you know very important right now and funding so digital asset encounter block stock fall to basically four different categories i've been privileged because you know when people talk about uh blockchain they talk about you know fungible and non-fungible tokens so you know this is probably the first question that they ask non-fungible tokens are actually unique so each non-fungible token is different from any other so you know like if you're collecting uh collectible art for example i actually have a i think it's in super rare i'm not sure if it's in super rare but i have an artwork that you know if you want <laughs> if you want to purchase using ethereum for that for that matter uh, those are examples of uh, non-fungible tokens fungible ones are you know your your uh, this, uh interchangeable tokens so you uh, this bitcoin for example is an example of uh, fung uh, this, uh, fungible sorry a fungible token so it's still yeah it's gonna take a while so while we are uh, what's this still Let's go and read some of the discussions here in Blockstack. Oh, this is good. So, yeah, if you want to read on uh, token economics or tokenomics, this is also a good uh, reference. And then, uh, so Bla Clarity is a better language for smart or writing smart contracts. So another language, as I mentioned, is use, uh, is is Clarity. If you wanna know more about writing smart contracts, but you know, um, Solidity is one of my you know my my background, so I prefer writing in in Solidity. And then I think there's a nice discussion here on uh, Gaia user control data storage. So Gaia is a system for storing application data without a centralized uh, central trusted party. So it creates a shared data layer for applications than any app can. And Gaia stores data off chain on one of the popular cloud uh, storage providers by default. And the users key encrypts the data to keep it private. So neither the cloud storage provider, which is one of our concerns, right, uh, nor the app developers will have access to the unencrypted data. So I think it's still cloning. Okay. So let's talk about uh, Blockstack authentication. So use Blockstack actually in terms of authentication is a decentralized SSO uh, protocol where users can sign into any Blockstack app with their username registered to the Stacks uh, blockchain using BNS and their data storage using Gaia. And then authentic authentication is performed using the user's client by crypto cryptographically signing the statement. So this is the authentication documentation. 
and then if you want to connect it's a library for integrating your uh, block stack uh, authentication guy and smart contracts with your apps so if you well, since if you plan on creating um, uh, more applications or decentralized applications you can just uh, let's just read on this one so it's 59 percent oh it's taking a while though Mm hmm 60 just gonna wait because it's uh what's this in the meantime yeah let's read on this one so block stock naming service the block stock naming service is a decentralized naming service it allows anyone to name a digital asset such as usernames or websites and register that name on the blockchain so bns or the block stock naming system is different from traditional naming system like dns or git because names are globally unique and the names are human readable such as you know this one and then names are owned by, by the public and private key pair so you don't have to trust an intermediary with ownership of the same so decentralized finance and bitcoin def defi or decentralized finance such as lending exchanges and stable coins has become popular use for smart contracts and there are some characteristics of clarity that makes it special well suited for the DeFi case so for example clarity can query uh, the bitcoin blockchain directly and enables developers to build DeFi apps and protocols that use Bitcoin. So actually, I think the first question that I'd ask you, why, why uh, was this not, not just because of clarity, for example, but why do you want to learn a programming language? So what are, there are a lot of programming language, but basically what those programming, so the computer actually talks in binary, right? everyone knows that, right? So when, uh, the, the, so how do we, for example, as humans, interact with that computer so because it only talks in binary or understands binary right so that's why we have all these programming languages you know java javascript um, clarity uh, what else solidity and all that because it's just a way for us to connect or just understand the the computer because the computer again it only makes use of a What's this? A binary pro it only talks in binary it only understands in in binary it is 75 percent okay so i just cut it down because it took a while but yeah we finally were able to uh what's this download using git clones if you can see it's already 100 percent few minutes ago if you probably know that it was like 80 85 75 so now we finally reach 100 percent because it slowed down because i was using uh, this obs for this one so what so now we're inside uh medical records so we'll just write uh, let's see what if the file is there so we're just gonna see the ehr because it is uh health record and then after that we're gonna ls so oh, i think all the modules are here write code for example view it with our visual studio code so i think everything is here all the modules are here and node modules are here so the next part is you're just gonna All right, npm start. And wait for our app to actually start. So starting the deploying server and everything is in place. Oh, okay. So it finally opened. I hope you, you can see that now. So localhost 3000 and yeah this is again my name and then once i click uh it will uh it says it will make use of the block stack uh, this platform and then once i get the id i will just uh click block stock and then afterwards i'll be able to see now my health records i will actually be able to uh what's this up upload uh, an image of myself a photo of myself and then you know view allow and then later on if you want to sign out or go out then i'll be able to go out right so thank you so much for joining me now if you haven't subscribed please make sure to click the subscribe button and i hope that you stay safe take care now guys Bye bye